Hello, my name is Bernardo Mendez, and I'm the product manager for the Active Power product line UPSs. So, for our readers who may not be familiar uh, with your company, tell us a little bit about Active Power and what you guys do. Well, we're based in Austin, Texas. We're a UPS manufacturer in the U.S. All the manufacturing is done in the U.S. and uh, it's all flywheel based. We were the first ones to come up with flywheel concepts and integrate. The, they have the first integrated UPS with a flywheel offering in the market. So let's talk a little bit about flywheels. Mm -hmm. uh, for our uh, readers who may be more familiar with battery UPSs, uh, tell us about how a flywheel UPS system I is different and how it works. Well, the basic difference is uh, batteries store energy based on a chemical reaction. So it's a chemical reaction which stores and releases energy versus the flywheel-based UPS or the flywheel-based energy storage, which is based on kinetic energy, which is uh, storing energy through a massive piece of steel spinning inside a casing, and that energy gets stored that, that way, and then it gets released whenever there is a power outage through power electronics, and that makes uh, the release of the energy for 15 seconds. We're uh, here in the, one of the conference rooms at 7 by 24, and you guys have a, uh, a demo unit. Let me... Uh, come back a little bit so we can show uh, our readers a little bit about what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Tell us what the, this is and, uh, uh, and uh, what your ambitions are for the product here. Sure. Well, obviously the building blocks in North America for multi-module data centers have traditionally been 750 kVA. For whatever reasons, the power electronics, the size of the servers, the size of the load, the configuration with the breakers and everything else that you need for power distribution. Hence, uh, the platform that we had with the 300 was not ideal for these mu base massive multi-module functions. And what we did was uh, create a highly dense uh, one flywheel based UPS that's 750 kVA to adapt to the building blocks. On top of that, we realized that power protection for data centers is no longer uniform and customers are also looking for different levels of power protections for different functions of their servers. So we created this uh, UPS with an extension, uh, an option for extended runtime that right now is based on uh, batteries for those customers that need extended runtime. So this uh, UPS, if you would, is very versatile. And one thing that a customer, I'm gonna steal his words, is, is future-proofing his data center. He's trying to create you know, a building block or a configuration that can be built upon for future needs of his data center. So uh, from a customer perspective, what are some of the reasons that uh, customers are interested in uh, a flywheel UPS as opposed to using one of the traditional battery systems? Well, it, it just goes back to like the 80s or the 70s where customers that were demanding 15 minutes of battery just because the IBM mainframe of that time took 15 minutes to shut down. Obviously in, the, in this day and age that's no longer the case and in a lot of cases customers are seeing that the availability and reliability are changing and that 15 seconds of runtime is more than enough for this. So we created a highly dense UPS with better TCO and better power density. So overall, it's a good value proposition because data centers like to put servers there. They don't like to put UPSs because that's their source of revenue or their cost. And what we're trying to create here is a better value proposition, uh, better TCO, and just overall better reliability because batteries by themselves, like I mentioned, is a chemical reaction versus a, a mechanical reaction which is a mechanical process is obviously more reliable than a chemical one. So that makes it more reliable. Well, let me ask about energy efficiency, the, the push mm -hmm. towards green data centers. Mm -hmm. has, has that been something that's played into interest in flywheels? Yes, that has so, something to do with it. Also, the topology of this UPS is different. It's a line interactive versus double conversion, which makes it more reliable and more efficient. It's up to 97 and a half efficient, and we've done the testing too for that. So not only are you getting uh, economy savings because you're, sa you're saving yourself uh, the maintenance of batteries and exchanging them every four to five years, but you're also getting uh, a more expected maintenance because with batteries, you don't know when you're going to have to exchange them so should something go bad. With these UPSs with flywheels, uh, you can have the reliability and program your maintenance more in advance because you know exactly when you have to do the maintenance. You mentioned before that there are many times that you see servers uh, sort of uh, carrying different kinds of loads mm -hmm. and that uh, companies are thinking about designing their data centers with this in mind. How does the UPS design uh, play into that? What, what options does, does it create and, and how are you seeing 
uh, folks using uh, you know, flywheels uh, in different kinds of uh, density scenarios, for example. What we're seeing a lot is uh, instead of having a massive centralized uh, you know, power protection scheme, they're dividing their servers into sections. Those servers have different functions. Some of them are mirroring other data centers. Some servers are essential, and some servers are uh, critical load. So they get segmentation of servers, and depending on the criticality of their needs, they're uh, you know, designing the power protection of it. So not only you, know, you could have a UPS with 15 seconds of runtime, and that should be enough to shut down your servers, or even less, and you could also design it with the extended runtime option for essential loads or uh, telecommunications, because that's the, the thing that takes uh, longer to reboot in a data center. So that way you have different lab levels of tiers of power protection within a data center rather than having a tier four overall data center that will only increase your cost when it shouldn't be that way. Some of the folks who have been perhaps a little uh, wary of, of flywheels have always looked at, well, is the ride through time enough? Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems that with the, the extended battery option here that builds in a way to uh, uh, address uh, scenarios for, for customers who might have that concern. Tell me how that might work. Well, basically, their concern is not even the server shutting down, but maybe you go the other way to the upstream or the generators and paralleling the generators or having a generator scheme that demands more than 15 seconds of runtime. What this is going to allow you with the option is to have different generator uh, configurations where the demand for maybe more than 50 seconds of runtime could be uh, you know, met with the extended runtime with the batteries. So it's more about the generators and that right run, that walking that's demanded. And uh, tell us a little bit about what, what's the availability? Is this uh, uh, available for customers now? It's going to be available for customers. We're launching it first in Europe. It's going to be available in Q2 in Europe and probably the end of uh, Q2 for the North America market. Okay, Bernardo, listen, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to, thank you. to tell us about Active Power and in introduce to your latest product. Thank you, I appreciate it.